gotta say, I don't get frustrated very often, but I'm very frustrated with Microsoft at this time because I just recorded a whole video that was like 15, 20 minutes about politics and Microsoft completely deleted it. Because I gotta face the facts, it's time to get a new computer. I really don't wanna do that because all my stuff is on this computer. It's such a pain in the butt. But I guess I gotta face facts. So I'm gonna try and do this in a live stream setting and see if I can cobble it together later for a public video. Well, this live stream is public right now, but it won't be when it's done. I will put it in the members loyalist contributors section uh, for those who support me on a regular basis. And then they can watch the unedited version, but I will put out an edited version of it later. So my volition in creating the video that Microsoft deleted was to discuss politics because a lot of folks have been commenting on my YouTube channel talking about politics. Specifically, you know, the left-right paradigm, the Democrats, Republicans, Trump, Biden, Kamala Harris, whatever other puppet they're talking about. So I wanted to offer a few things to those folks, even though in some of those comment sections, I would ask questions like, are you familiar with the Hegelian dialectic? And then uh, like one guy, I think his name was Big Stank or something like that, username Big Stank, made fun of the name Hegelian dialectic as if, oh, oh I, I don't want to get any learning today, sir. You know, these things take time. You got to research them. You got to be open-minded. And if you're not, if you're just happy participating in the little fiction system that you're in, hey, that's cool too, whatever. So first thing I'm going to touch on, first thing I'm going to cover is something I've suggested time and time again in the past, something that personally helped me years ago was I spent two years studying the trivium method, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. So this is Trivium Education website. This is not the only website that teaches the Trivium method, but it's the one that I used. It has all the materials you need to learn it and to do a course of study. Everything you need is on this website. So to, just to give you a little history on my perception of what the trivia method is and how it came to be. If you remember back in the, okay, let me give you a, it's from a per, personal firsthand experience. My grandmother, well, step-grandmother was German. She was sent to school. I was grew up on a farm. She was sent to school at a schoolhouse that was about five miles down the road from where our farm was. This schoolhouse taught grades one through 12, all in one building with one teacher. So in that area, there was just farmhouses, people farming. So they would have maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen children in that schoolhouse, Monday through Friday, being taught. And they taught the subjects using the trivium method. And it's interesting because the trivium method follows along the chronology of growth of a child. Because what, when, when a child is young and they're a toddler and they, they first learn to speak, what are they learning? They're learning grammar. So you reach a certain point and then all of a sudden, Children start asking why things are the way they are, and they question everything. Well, that's the logic part of it. And then when children reach, you know, 17, 8, even 21 and later, now all of a sudden they know everything. And so they share rhetoric. Grammar, logic, rhetoric. It follows along with the development of a child. So that's how they were able to do this all in one schoolhouse, because the older students could help the younger students. They all taught each other. And as I've said countless times, if you want to really get closure on a subject, 
the best thing to do is to start teaching it yourself to others and you will learn it very, very fast. Same principles there. So that's the trivium method. So once you start using that and you learn that and get closure on that, it will help you when you study or learn anything else. What I did after two years of studying trivium is then I ran into correct sentence structure. And so what I did was I took the fiction grammar out of the trivium and I put the correct sentence structure. I put the correct grammar in and then the logic and rhetoric. And it served me very well ever since. So that's the first thing I'm going to suggest to you to study. The next thing I'm going to suggest to you to study is from a channel, a YouTube channel called Mind Unveiled. So you can see this channel here. This is called Mind Unveiled. And this particular video right here, Politics Unveiled, Anti-Masons, whatever that word is, Occult Government and the Puppet Show. This video will give you insight as to how political parties developed in the United States, the origins of them, all the way up to the way they are now. Mind Unveiled, the latest video. They just released it a day ago. It's got 85K views. Man, I wish I could get views like that, damn. But it's well done video. And actually, the whole rest of the channel is very well done. They're very, very well researched and very easy uh, to watch. Well-spoken uh, young gentleman. And also, there's also a young lady that comes on there sometimes that speaks. Um, so if you want to know about politics, if you want to know about what you're getting involved in, check that video out. Very, very informative. Now, the third thing I'm going to offer to you is the Hegelian dialectic. I don't know how many of you have heard me mention that or how many of you have actually bothered to look it up. But go ahead and look it up. It's basically a premise offered that the only way that human beings can advance collectively or get a resolution to a situation is if you have two opposing sides. If you have two opposing sides and they come into conflict, then they can create a third uh, reaction or whatever, a third element. And that's how human beings and society moves forward through conflict, real or imagined. So there's a theory that politics, the two-party system we have now, was created using the Hegelian dialectic meaning they felt they needed to create the appearance of two opposing sides in order to get the results they wanted. Keep in mind, folks, this is my left hand, i.e. Democrats, i.e. liberals. This is my right hand, i.e. conservative, i.e. Republican. Both of these hands are connected to the same brain. Same thing with politics. Both parties are beholden to a master, a brain. Whatever that brain is, I'm not going to get into that. I'm telling you, you, you can prove, try and prove me wrong. You won't be able to. That is why nothing ever really changes. In the short term, it might change. Sure, yeah. But it always gets worse. Gradually worse. For example, is the standard of living better for you now than it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago? Is it better now? Are you making more money now than you did five years ago? And does that money carry you further than what you made five years ago? Did your rent go down? Do you have more vacation time? Do you have more quality time to spend with your family? I think I, these are all rhetorical questions, by the way, folks. 
The reason why nothing ever gets better and it only gradually gets worse is because both political parties serve the same master. It doesn't matter who's in there. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat. It doesn't matter if it's a Republican. It doesn't matter if it's a Green Party. It doesn't mean, matter if it's an after party, all right? They're still beholden to the same master, the same guns and clubs, the same rulers, the same elite, whatever you want to call them. That is why nothing ever changes. And as long as you keep participating with that system, you're just going to keep getting the same shit. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. The way the system is built, I don't see any way for any hero to come in and save anybody. I don't care what your name is. No one can get to the level of a Biden, a Harris, a Trump, an Obama, a Bush. No one can get to that level without making some deals. Let's put it that way. No one. Don't care what their name is. So anyone who thinks that, I think, might be a little misguided, might be prone to believing in fairy tales. All right. All right. So now I'm going to move on to my analogy. My analogy of participating in a political system, specifically the political, the two-party political system of the United States. So, if you have uh, an abusive relationship, like domestic violence and things like that, say you have, I'll use the old. Uh, the old chestnut, you have the abusive drunk husband and then the, the victimized wife, okay, where the husband comes home drunk and then the wife gets physically abused, verbally abused. She gets black eyes and things like that, and then she goes to the nail salon or whatever, and everybody's like, oh, how'd you get that black eye? And then she's like, oh, I tripped down the stairs. I ran into the table. I'm so clumsy, blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows she's in an abusive relationship. And so uh, they say, you got to do something about it. You got to stop this. Next time it happens, you got to do something about it. So, you know, next night the husband comes home drunk and starts his, his stuff up again, starts trashing the house and throwing her around. And she calls one of her friends and she's like, oh, my goodness, I think he's going to he's going to really hurt me. So the friend calls 911 and the cops come to the house. What happens next? The husband is sitting on the couch crying, his head in his hands. He's like, oh, my gosh, this isn't me. You know, I would never do this to you in my right mind. It's the alcohol. I'm so sorry. I'm going to get help. I'm going to stop this. You wait and see. Things are going to change. Things are going to be totally different from this day forward. And so the wife's like, okay, I'm not going to press charges. And the cops leave. Everything's fine. The husband actually goes and gets help. He gets anger management courses. Maybe he hooks up with uh, AA. I don't know. He does something, but things get better for a week or two, right? Everything's great. They're going out, uh, seen in public. Their friends are like, wow, they're, they're a great couple when he's not drinking, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, the other shoe drops, and one night, he loses his mind again, and he's not drinking, and slaps her around gets a baseball bat, he's ready to do something very, very terrible, very serious. Long story short, she ends up in the hospital. He's at the foot of the bed crying. I'm so sorry I did that. I don't know what happened. I need mental help. My, my, my brain pressure, blah, blah, blah. I'm depressed, blah, blah, blah. 
If you give me one more chance, I swear I'm going to change. Things are going to be different this time. Ad nauseum, so on and so forth. You know the story. So what's the solution to this problem, folks? This abusive relationship, what is the solution to it? Do you keep participating with it? Does she keep participating with the relationship, with the marriage, thinking that it's going to get better and that he's going to stop abusing her? Is, is that ever going to change, do you think? Or is it just going to gradually get worse? Is the solution to extricate herself from the relationship, separate herself with, from it, stop participating with it, get rid of it? and do something else. Is that a solution? Is that probably the most sensible solution? That's the solution to the political dilemma. Because the government, we, well, not we, but the people are involved in an abusive relationship with the government. The government is the abuser, the bully, in every sense of the word. Every time an election comes up, oh, things are going to get better. Things are going to be different this time. We're going to change everything. We're going to make America great again. Jobs are going to go up. You're going to have more free time, more vacation time. America on top, blah, 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 blah. Things are going to be so much better if you give us another chance. It's going to be so different, I promise. It's like Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown, and he goes to kick it, and then she moves it. Whoop! He falls on his butt. Same thing. What do you do? Do you keep participating with that abusive relationship? Or do you leave it? I remember when I was a child, family members would have heated political discussions talking about voting for the lesser of two evils. Well, how's voting for evil been working out for you if they're both evil? The whole voting system is goofy. Voting for someone just because of their skin color is crazy. Well, I think people with orange skin color need to be represented more. They're underrepresented. We need to make orange jobs. We need to have Orange History Month. And now we can have an orange president. I'm going to vote for them. They're orange. Regardless of what their, their <laughs> platform is. Or I'm going to vote for this person because they're a female. Just because they're a woman. Or I'm going to vote for the other one just because I hate the personality of their opponent. Never mind the policies. It's all so goofy to me, folks. It really is. And then you'll have these guys, these people saying, oh, love it or leave it. What does that even mean? Love it or leave it. So... First Nations Native Americans who are very unhappy about what happened to their ancestors, very unhappy with their condition of state at their reservations and things like that. Are you going to tell them to love it or leave it? That is an ignorant argument and an ignorant thing to say to somebody. So that's my take on politics. If you want to continue on with an oppressive system, oppressive, an authoritarian system, a system that mandates to you, a system of might makes right, then by all means, continue to vote. Continue to buy into the lies. But if you don't, if you want to find something different, a good way to begin is to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar, Obtain your own live life claim that you authored. I'm not talking about uh, 
quantum gobbledygook half-assed live life claims that you buy for 200 bucks from somebody else. I'm talking about one that you yourself make because if you want to be autonomous, if you want to be your own authority, you have to be the author of your documents, your own documents. You are in charge, not me, not some other goofball calling himself commander or chief or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I don't, want, I don't mean to name call like that. Actually, I do. I slip up sometimes, but I do apologize for that because I, I don't really like to do that. But you, you get – instead of taking direction from someone like me or, or someone else who claims some sort of title, imaginary title, be your own authority. And, of course, I'm not telling you what to do. If you prefer to subjugate yourself to someone else, to subjugate yourself to a government – to bow down and kiss someone else's butt as an authority, that's completely up to you. That's your choice. I won't hold it against you. It's just you and I probably won't be contracting anytime in the near future. I really like the construct I've built here. Um, I have actually, in my mind, in my view, achieved a lot as far as teaching goes. I've little over a dozen correct sentence structure students who have gotten closure, various levels of closure on the grammar. And half of those dozen have very, very high levels of closure on the grammar. So much so that they're able to create their own documents. They know the postal mechanics. They know the banking mechanics and the flag mechanics. And they can walk into a foreign vessel and dry dock and navigate their way safely through that venue and come out the other end. None the worse for wear. And that's pretty cool. And those are the folks I contract with using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. The balance of the honor and the grace, the uh, position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. It's a wonderful thing when it happens, but there's so few of us out there. So few of us. But I'm so happy that there are some out there. Hopefully some of you watching this right now will be one of them at some point in time. Thank you.